as of now, we can't talk about the preacher. <laughs> Good, good or bad, because we don't want her to get a big head by saying good things about her. But we don't want to uh, depress her by saying things negative. So we just keep things even. Uh, we're on the third third lesson in the unit of good news. I was just flipping back to refresh my memory on what we did last time. And we talked about uh, Jesus announces good news, and it was... Um, you remember we talked about John the Baptist, he was in jail and he sent his disciples to see Jesus. And do you remember what they asked him? Was he the real? Was he the real deal? That's right. right. <laughs> he said, are That's you what we're looking for? Yeah. Do they need to wait on somebody else or is he the real deal? And then he started healing people, raising, raising them, uh, widower's son from the dead and that sort of thing. And he said, he said, now go back and tell him what you saw and then see if that answers this question. They, they asked him, they asked him, where's the beef? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I didn't know what you were talking about, Charles, because that shows how old I am, but I do. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> okay. So today's lesson is called hope because of Christ. And the uh, focal passage is the first Thessalonians chapter one, verses two through 10. Uh, the purpose statement is to consider how faith, hope, and love are marks of Christian life. And I, um, when I was reading this, uh, I couldn't understand. I didn't know exactly at first who was the audience, which shows you how uh, I need to bone up on my Bible study. But as it appears later on in the, in the passage, it mentions that, uh, Paul was writing this letter to uh, the, the Thessalonians. What a surprise. Um, and this, this could be, they said, possibly the first, it was the first book that Paul wrote, and it possibly is the first book of the New Testament. I thought that was pretty interesting. It was. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and read the, read the, the focal passage. We always thank God for all of you when we mention you constantly in our prayers. This is because we remember your work that comes from faith, your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. What? Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're just in time for the quiz. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. Do you, do you have the book? Yeah, I do not. Okay. I do not have that. Well, you don't need it. You'll, you'll be just fine. But I'm reading a passage from 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 1, verses 2 through 10. And the name of this lesson is called Hope Because of Christ. Um, we were just speak, talking about the, the, when I first uh, started reading the passage, I didn't really know who the audience was. It was kind of hard for me to follow. But then as I read through the rest of the lesson, um, it mentioned that this was Paul's first first book. It was a letter written to the uh, people of Thessalonia. And this is possibly the first, Thessalonians is possibly the first book of the New Testament. So we thought that was interesting. Um, okay, I forgot where I left off, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> right here. Mm -hmm. This is because we remember your work that comes from faith your effort that comes from love and your perseverance that comes from hope in Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God and we know that he has chosen you. We know this because our good news didn't come to you just in speech, but also with power, the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know as well as we do that we, you know as well as we do what kind of people we were when we were with you, which was for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord when you accepted the message that came from the Holy Spirit with joy in spite of great suffering. As a result, you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia. And I'm going to take a guess at this. Is it a, a, a Shea? A Shea? Anybody can correct me? Achaia, I would think. Okay, Achaia. Silent H. 
the message about the Lord rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but every, every, in every place. <laughs> the news about your faithfulness to God has spread so that we don't even need to mention it. People tell us about what sort of welcome we had from you and how you turned to God from idols. As a result, you are serving the, serving the living and true God, and you are waiting for his son from heaven. His son is Jesus, who is the one he raised from the dead and who is the one who will rescue us from the coming wrath. Well, it, it ended up on a very, uh, that got, you, got my attention, the coming wrath. So then the writer of the article goes on to uh, talk about a, a, a situation he had outside of his church. He, he came up a, upon a, a fellow that was walking down the sidewalk. It, it could have been a homeless person. I'm not sure. But he said, the, the fellow says, what goes on in there? Oh, and he says, I was asked the question from a man who just happened to be walking down the street in front of the uh, parish where I serve as pastor. Well, it's a church, I replied. And then, he's, then the other gentleman says, what is a church? I asked him, had he ever been inside? No, sir, I haven't. Every time I've tried to go in, the door's been locked. When's the building open? Always on Sunday mornings. Is it open any other time? I tried to think of the regular times when they might be able to come, he might be able to come to an unlocked door, but I couldn't think of one. So I'm going to skip down a little bit. I invited him to come by on Sunday morning and told him that I hoped to talk to him again, but I had to be getting home for supper. I wasn't going to be much help with him on his question that day. But then it dawned on me that if the church had been involved in the neighborhood, people nearby would know what, who we were and what was going on in the building. We would be developing, developing a ministry of caring as well as a reputation for doing good. I imagine that the early Christian church must have had some of the same problems since they would be creating something that would be unknown to the community. It would be essential to model Christ in everything that they did since they would, since there would be no other way for, for people to experience a risen Lord and to see God at work in them. And so it is us for, for us today, let's consider ways in which we can demonstrate the love of God in Christ in ways that might help others to understand and seek God's love for themselves. And I think is later on in the in the lesson it mentions that back then they didn't have the Bible, <laughs> so they had to uh, uh, teach by example and, and that sort of thing. So I thought that was interesting. And the writer doesn't didn't never mention whether or not the fellow came back. I would have loved to have known if he if the gentleman came back to church, but but it didn't mention it. So the next section is you know about about. First Thessalonians, uh, we talked about a little bit of this. We always thank God for all of you. The Apostle, Pro, Pro, the Apostle Paul, say that 10 times fast, was proud of the church in Thessalonia. Is that, am I saying that right, Thessalonica? Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be said. <laughs> because they were keeping the faith in the midst of their struggles. And it mentions that his first visit to the city was recorded in Acts 17, and he got a negative reception. Um, he said he was there when he there. There were a number of Greek God worshipers at the synagogue who listened to Paul's preaching about Jesus and responded to the offer of salvation in Christ's name. So he, he got a negative reception, but he did get get some results. It's believed that the church was founded in 49 A.D and was made up, uh, primarily made up of Gentile men and women who turned to God from, from idols. And Paul may have been referring to pagan gods, but there was a reason to suppose that he was implying previous worship of the Roman emperor. I, I didn't, I hadn't uh, know, known that as well. I guess they worshiped the Roman emperor as though he was, he was God. Turning away from Rome was always a risky business. There are a few references to the Hebrew scriptures in 1 Thessalonians, since his readers would be unfamiliar with, with, this, with such references. So Paul sent that letter, sent the letter to the Thessalonians during his second journey, you know, around 51 AD. Paul's attempts to visit the Thessalonians before that had been uh, thwarted by circumstances beyond his control. 
And in the Bible, in chapter 2, verse 18, it, said, it says Satan stopped us. <laughs> so he wanted the Thessalonians to pass his letter around so the community might receive his prayers. It's considered the earliest letter of Paul in the Bible and possibly the earliest book in the New Testament. What a meaningful passage. Yeah. That applies so well even today. I mean, if you read that today, it's almost as if he was writing it to us today. Right. Yeah. And then it goes on to mention too about them not having a gospel back in those days. So Paul, all, the, all they had was their personal witness in the <clears throat> presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, Paul describes their active ministry in terms of faith, love, and hope. We remember your work that comes from faith, your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. Have you ever been thankful for a person who has been special in your life? What examples of faith in others have given you encouragement to grow spiritually? Does anybody have one of those to share? <laughs> Well, growing up in a Methodist church, I don't remember how many years, but we had a pastor, uh, his name was George Weinkoff, and um, I went to church and we had Boone Pews. My maiden name was Boone because there were so many of us. It wasn't that we would make somebody move, but we all sat together and there were at least two pews because my dad had 10 brothers and sisters. But my grandmother, they called her Mama Boone, would often doze off. She was in her 80s while he was preaching. And it horrified one of my aunts. And he told her to stop worrying about it, that if she felt comfortable enough to come in and sleep in church, then she was welcome to do that. He didn't take it personal. <laughs> um, but my, my grandmother was, I would have to say, was special in my life. And after she passed away, my mom, being from Germany, just had a few different views about graveyards, and I wanted to go take flowers to my grandmother's grave, and she said, well, why don't you go by there, but why don't you take the flowers to someone, you know, someone in, in, memory, in honor of your grandmother's memory, so I took him to the pastor and his wife, he was retired, um, and said, you know, thank you for all that you did for my grandmother and all that you meant to our family, because as a teenager, I was still trying to understand, um, you know, how important those people had been to my grandmother and to my, my growth in the church. So um, I was really thankful for that pastor. Goma Powell falls asleep in church. Do oh. you remember that from Andy Griffith? <laughs> <laughs> he, he would sleep with his eyes open. <laughs> Joseph, I was just thinking about not not so much a special person and there have been many in my lifetime that have been a good influence on me but i was just thinking about um you know we used to when life was in such turmoil we could go go to church and i always have felt you know peace when i went to church and um not just the church itself but the people that were there of like mind and um it's it's kind of difficult now because we can't just go to church at, at the moment and find that peace but i think it's been real helpful you know to do what we're doing and then also i've been in the book um club with the book that we have been oh, yeah. reading which is wonderful it, it Gary said that's the best book he's ever read, and I, I'm right there with him. Um, there are many signs of miracles. There are, um, I love quotes, and there's many quotes that I have been writing down, and I was thinking of one, you know, in our lesson today, you mentioned hope, and I can't put my hands on it right now, but it's talking about how it's almost like a, a leavening agent, like if you're making bread, and you let it rise, and hope is the same way. You know, it, it rises. And, um, but anyway, that's that's my 
I was thinking about it. I don't, you know, I miss really miss the church. Right. That's a great point. Thank, thanks for sharing that with us. Okay. So work that comes by faith. I'm on page 68 and it mentions how impressed Paul was with the church for sharing their faith. And so the writer goes on to say, hey, ha have you ever observed how members from the new church in town seem to be everywhere imaginable? Knocking on doors, sending out postcard invitations, riding on parade floats, holding block parties, and handing out backpacks and t-shirts. I think we should get a float the next time we're ever, we have a parade, we need to get one in the Albemarle, Albemarle Parade. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry can sit in the front. Or yeah. sit, sit up over here. <laughs> I'll drive. <laughs> you can be the marshal of our play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I always kid him because he likes to know what's going on in the community, you know, that I always thought about running for mayor or something, but maybe Marshall would be good. <laughs> that, could, that could be his uh, way he uh, begins his campaign. He can kick his campaign off yeah. by being on the Central United <laughs> Methodist Church parade float. As long as, long as I don't have to wear a red suit. <laughs> that looks good on you, Jerry. <laughs> so it's easy to feel intimidated by such intentional evangelism and threatened as a congregation. But perhaps a better response would be to thank God for doing new things through a new community of faith. Yeah, so a parade float would be a new thing for, for our church. When Paul commended his readers about work that comes by faith, he was speaking of their faithfulness in preaching Christ. It was vitally important that the word of God continue to be proclaimed in Thessalonians. All who call on the Lord's name will be saved. So how can they call on someone they don't have faith in? And how can they have faith in someone they haven't heard of? And how can they here without a preacher. I thought this was interesting. And how can they preach unless they're sent? You know, every congregation has the opportunity to share Christ with others. After all, it's how people become associated with the church to begin with. Somebody invites them to into the fellowship. The majority of people in a church would feel awkward talking to new people about their faith, but the witness of a lay person is of invaluable worth. When, it, when compared to the words of the preacher. What, how about this? So our word is more important than Jill's. <laughs> you guys, you guys uh, make sure you tell her that the next time we see her. <laughs> In the early days of the Methodist church, a circuit rider pastor would cover a wide territory, preaching daily and offering com communion at a variety of locations. And it would often take them five or six weeks to cover the circuit. All other times of worship would be led by members of the church. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it makes me think of the first time Joseph and I came to visit Central, and I know we've shared that before. And we, we liked uh, Dr. Beatty, but it was the people who greeted us. And the next week when we went back, they remembered our names and greeted us by name. And that is one of the reasons we chose Central. And that's been a long time over ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> it's funny, she says, <laughs> might take us a little longer to remember names when they come in <laughs> Well, it's, it's funny, <laughs> she, brings up, <laughs> she brings up the fact that people remembered our names but for several years, people thought our names were William's mom and William's dad. That's what they called us, William's mom and William's dad. <laughs> uh, you guys remember Miss Gresham? Uh, yes. Yeah. When uh, she kept William for a while, uh, what, about a year? Something like that? Two maybe? years. And uh, when Tanya called her to, to ask her if she was interested in doing that, uh, the next Sunday or whatever, Miss Gresham uh, was talking to Susan Talbert. I know you guys remember Susan. Mm -hmm. She said, guess who called me this week? William's mom. <laughs> she didn't even know Tanya's name. She didn't even know Tanya's name. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Yeah, you made me lose my place. Where was it? Oh, over <laughs> here. That's right. how you're known when your children come along. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. So on page 69, rather than feel uncomfortable about something that you don't want to do, why not consider praying to God to create a passion for ministry that matches your greatest desires? Thomas Salino, a contemporary of St. Francis of Assisi, I hope I'm saying that right, shared these words of instructions from Francis. The preacher must first draw from secret prayers what he will later pour out in his holy sermons. He must fir first grow hot within before he speaks words that are themselves cold. Hmm. There's much work to do. God can help us discover or renew the gifts we have to tell the world about the love of Christ. Do you guys have a kind of ministry that you think would be fun to do? Other than riding on a parade float? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I love to make cards and that's my ministry. And um, it's mentioned in this book about making cards because I feel, you know, as we get older, um, you're more limited as to the things that you can do. And um, so I, I feel good about that. You know, at least, at least I can do that much, um, maybe to brighten someone's day. Right. It's funny you should say that as we get older, we're limited. Uh, it depends on how you look at it, maybe, because as I get older, and it's coming on fast, <laughs> I, feel like, I, I feel like I've got, um, well, I guess I do have a little more time. My, my kids, I don't have to drive my kids everywhere, or Tanya did it most of the time, but we had, uh, when they don't have their license, you have to drive them everywhere and be everywhere, and if you get a little more time to do things, like uh, when they drive themselves, like uh, prepare a Sunday school lesson or uh, think up old TV show references like Gomer Pyle <laughs> and, and come up with ideas for like Jerry riding on a parade float. You, you got more time <laughs> to do all that, those types of things as, as you get get older. So on page, right. uh, go ahead. Uh, I was just thinking about Nell who has been knitting forever and made so many of our children, grandchildren, um, Christmas stockings and uh, knitted prayer shawls and you know I just think of so many that of things like that she's done over the years right I agree I, I cherish the one I have from now and I, I and I've given some as to people that I know in need and you're right that is a true blessing thank you we were I learned to knit in the second grade wow during, Second World War, all the kids had to know how to knit, and we made little, just made little squares, and the women in the town took them and put them together and made Afghans and sent to the servicemen. Wow. And all I knew how to knit was a I didn't know you could knit anything else <laughs> until I got older and Frank Amazing. Argyle socks were in style then, and he said, I'm going to marry somebody that can make a pair of Argyle socks. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks, I had a pair made. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Those socks could have gotten you in trouble, Neil. <laughs> glad, it, glad it worked out, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it did, too. Thanks to Yvonne Pepper. She got us together good. Yeah. Okay. On page 70, we're going to talk about effort that comes from love. I'm going to start with the second, second paragraph. Effort is the kind of work that demands more from us because it will not be satisfied with short-term commitment. Effort requires us to keep returning day after day in faithful acts of service. And then the writer goes on to talk about years ago, he had surgery on his neck and he took him two months to recover. And he talked about his friends and church members who sent him cards uh, that first week. And, and he, he although he pre appreciated it, he wants to point out there were a couple of ladies in the congregation who personally sent him cards once or twice every week. I knew them well enough to know that this was something that I, that they enjoyed doing for just about everyone. 
but I couldn't ignore how much it meant to me to be thought of every day. When love keeps showing up, it makes a difference. And that, that reminds me of uh, you know, ten, 10 years ago when I uh, was uh, sick, I got a card from a church and I never, to this day, I don't know who sent it. <laughs> I don't know why they said, I, I'm sure I knew somebody in that church, but I never, never fear, found out who it was. I, I know where the church is. It was, uh, I used to work at uh, Michelin back then. And it was on the, when I, I passed it on the way to church, on the way to work. And uh, probably somebody I worked with went to church there, but I, I never did find out who it was, but I, I certainly uh, did, did appreciate it. So it was the, Cards like that that I really enjoyed as well when it came from unexpected or, or unknown sources. But the, the Apostle Paul not only planted new churches, planned new, you know, planted new churches in many locations, but he kept in touch with them through letters sent by messengers as well as through, sometimes he was able to visit. Um, I'm going to skip down some to bottom of page 70. Paul wanted the church to get in the habit of loving one another in all kinds of situations because their faith would face times of trial as well as seasons of joy. And Paul was pleased to share with his readers that their witness was making a real difference. The message about the Lord rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place. <clears throat> the news about your faithfulness to God has spread so that we don't even need to mention it. That was from verse 8, as we read earlier. Love should always be looking for new opportunities to help other persons and new ways to grow stronger than the service, the, through service and whatever is necessary. So Corinthians is perhaps the most famous of Paul's writing that also mentions faith, hope, and love. And Paul writes, love puts up with all things, trust in all things, hope for all things, endures all things. When the scriptures read at weddings, it encourages newlyweds to consider the demands of marriage and family, remind, and family, reminding them that God's love is up to the task. <clears throat> if they're willing to love one another with that kind of love, God's love will help them to honor their vows through the changing seasons of life. So whenever the Christians gather together, uh, we can find opportunities, opportunities to stretch our faith beyond our comfort zones. Keeps going back to that parade float, Jerry to experience a bolder, stronger faith that is up to life's struggles. When love shows up unexpectedly in new places and keeps them returning again and again, soon the people who live in those places begin to trust the giver of love who sends us out into the world. Doesn't everyone in the world deserve that kind of love? So what persons or organizations are you committed to regardless of circumstances or personal convenience? Hmm. More and more, the more as I get older, more and more uh, central, right. central United Methodist. And I shouldn't wait till I get older. So that's something I have to work on. You know, they um, they used to um, pack seeds, and. Um, I can't remember now. Do you remember where they sent them to? I don't remember, but I remember I, them doing it. And, you know, and um, I think I participated a couple of times and that was wonderful because we had all ages there. You know, that was something that we could do um, from the youngest child to the elder, uh, you know, more elderly in the church. And, um, it, it was just joyful because the tables were set up that you just came in and sat down and, um, you know, not with your group particularly, but with just anybody at the table. And we had so much fun doing it. And I, I hope that maybe we can do more things like that where everybody can participate. Right. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to have to wind this up. I just happen to think I've got to record this, download this recording before we check out of the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to speed up a little. Uh, on page 72, 
perseverance that comes from the hope in the our Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever difficulties in the yes. church, the church was experienced, they experiencing, they had confidence that Christ would soon return and bring them together with everyone from their community who had already died. Paul shared this hope with them. Um, it didn't happen. It still hasn't happened. We're still waiting for the coming of Christ. I'm assuming they're meaning the second coming here. <laughs> We've even created church season for waiting, Advent, and have written songs about waiting. Later in his ministry, the Apostle Paul adjusted his expectations. Rather than worry about the day when Christ will return in glory, we can persevere in our faith with the hope of seeing Jesus in everyone that we serve. Seeing Christ at work through loving, caring persons does not diminish our hope to be with Christ forever at the time of our death. But it gives us personal reasons to want to serve Christ more in this lifetime. Because Christ is risen and our hope is sure, we don't have to worry about eternity. We have all of our lives to love and care for others, free of anxiety about God's love. Why shouldn't we find new opportunities to demonstrate, demonstrate acts of mercy and kindness? I often think about the persons I have known and loved in my ministry who have passed during my years as their pastor. I received blessings, joy, and inspiration from the faithful acts of kindness and love during their last years on earth. As I remember their impact on my life, I think about the many others who benefited from their example during all the years that came before. I have learned from them that every day is a gift and that God can use, can use you to touch the lives of others daily. I saw the face of Christ in them. Persevere, persevere in faith and hope so that Christ may be seen in you. And how does the hope of Christ find expression in your life today? Well, by coming to Sunday school and then watch, watching worship, I think, absolutely. <clears throat> that, that hope is what gets, gets through the um, things, gets us through things like a pandemic, um, people trying to take over the capital, <laughs> those sorts of things. That, that hope is, is the driver of, of everything for me. Hope that it'll get better. Yes, yeah. <laughs> hope that we will get through it and things will even be better when, when it's over. And I think, I think we'll be better. For example, when the pandemic's over, I think we'll be a, a better world, a, a stronger world. What? We have that faith. We know it will. Right. All right. That line that Joseph read from the book, we have all of our lives to love and care for others, free of anxiety about God's love. I think that hope that we have and knowing that God's love, I think that's what helps us keep living and loving and caring for other people. That's right. You know, they also mentioned um, on, on the page before about, the people that have come before us. And I was looking at some of the old directories the other day. From we do church. that too. <laughs> and oh my gosh, you think of all the wonderful people, you know, that have come before us and done so much um, for the church. And, you know, it, it, that gives you hope to keep, keep right. going and keep working. Right. Absolutely. Well, now, this one I remember in particular, Bob Gulledge's daddy, Mr. Loy, when I was much younger and we sang, he never used a hymn book. He sang every verse that well, was in church without a book. And I thought, oh mm -hmm. my, in the world did he ever learn to do that? Now, that's something I thought I wish I could do. I've worked on it, but I'm not. Not like he was. I still need the book sometimes. Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I can go. I'll go ahead and wrap it up with the prayer that's, that's printed in the in the book. If you, uh, it's on page seventy three, so I'll start. Um, Loving and generous God, through your gift of Christ and the example of His faithful followers. We have seen how faith, hope, and love are powerful resources for daily living. 
Help us to live every day with our eyes and hearts open to your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Ellen came. Hey, Glad Ellen. to see Brenda. Yes. And now Ellen's here. Okay. That Ellen? That's Ellen. Ellen. Hey, Ellen. Okay. Yeah, I, I oh, it is, is Ellen. <laughs> yes. It didn't look like Ellen, but yeah, now it looks like Ellen. Kind of dark, yeah. I'm not sure she can hear us. I don't think she can hear she us. She must not have a uh, video turned on. And, and Charles, is, Charles has been so quiet today. Um. <laughs> we appreciate you doing this, Joseph. Oh, anytime. And we'll see you next Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and end it so I can download it. So. Tanya doesn't have to pay for another day. <laughs> be, uh, be safe coming down the mountain. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. See you That's later. Joseph, thank, thank you. I enjoyed it. And I'm sorry I tuned in here late. Time just got away from me. That's no problem. We'll see you next Sunday. Or we'll Glad call you. You, you don't care about next Sunday, we'll call you. <laughs> All right. All right, bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Dottie. <laughs>